Here is our negative feedback loop. X of S is the input, Y of S is the output. The transfer function is given by the output Y of S over the input X of S. At this summing point, X of S is added in. Let's suppose that the output at this summing point is called um, Y1 of S. So we add in X of S and at this summing point we have to subtract um, H of S multiplied by Y of S. Okay, so here we have a takeoff point. So um, we have the same signal leaving the leaves the takeoff point through two different routes. So Y of S goes this way and it also goes this way. And we have this block here, so we have to multiply Y of S by the value of this block, which is H of S. So the output over here would be H of S times Y of S. And uh, that's negated at the summing point, so we have to put a minus sign. So at a takeoff point, the same signal may um, leave on many different paths. So we could have a path here. And we have the same signal Y of S. We could have many more. Uh, the same signal leaves each of those paths. So Y of S is the output here, so it must be the output down here as well. So now we can see what Y of S is. Y of S is Y1 of S multiplied by G of S in this block here. So we just plug all of this thing here in for Y1 of S. Now we have to rearrange this equation to get y of s divided by x of s. Okay, so we do some rearranging here. We can um, take this term over to the left-hand side and factorize y of s out of the left-hand side. So finally, we want to get the transfer function. So we want y of s over x of s. So we divide both sides by x of s and by the quantity inside the square brackets. So we divide the left-hand side by x of s times the quantity in the square brackets. So we will get the transfer function. And on the right hand side we get g of s over 1 plus h of s times g of s. Let's take this example. Suppose that g of s and h of s are given by these two expressions. So here is our transfer function. g of s over 1 plus g of s times h of s. So we'll simplify this expression by multiplying above and below by the product of the denominators that appear. So we have to multiply this here by all of this. Okay, so we have s squared times s plus 4 on top, and we multiply this quantity by 1 to get this, and then we must multiply by um, this fraction here. So we will effectively cancel these out. So we will have just 2s squared. So underneath we get um, a single s cubed term, s squared by s. Then as for the s squared term, we have 4s squared plus 2s squared plus another 2s squared. So that's 8s squared. As for the s term, we have 2s by 4, that's 8s plus 6s. So we get 14s, and as for the constant term, we six fours are 24. Use the transfer function and the initial and final value theorems to determine the initial and steady state values of the output little y of t if the input is given by little x of t equals 4e to the minus t, where t is greater than or equal to 0. OK, we need big X of s, so we have to get the Laplace transform of little x of t. So here is the Laplace transform of e to the power of a t, where in our case a um, is minus 1. Okay, the number in front of t is minus 1. So we have 4 times 1 over s minus a. So s minus minus 1 gives us s plus 1. So we have 4 over s plus 1. Now p of s is output y of s divided by the input big x of s. 
Now we know that P of S only depends on what G of S and H of S are. Okay, they're the particular G and H that we used in the problem. It doesn't depend on what X of S is. So Y of S is just P of S multiplied by X of S. Now we want the initial value of the output, okay? Um, the output is little y of t. Now we have big y of s. We could go and get the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity and we would have little y of t. And uh, what we want then is the limit as t approaches zero of little y of t. Okay, that'll give us the initial value That's when t approaches zero. But the initial value theorem tells us that we don't have to get the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity. We do not have to find little y of t. We can use the fact that the limit that we're after, this limit here, is the same as the limit as s approaches infinity of s times big Y of s. So we have to multiply s by this quantity here. So on top we get 4s to the 4 plus 16s cubed. Now you can see that if we let s approach infinity in this fraction, the top part, the numerator will approach infinity and the denominator will approach infinity. So we'll have infinity over infinity. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So for this type of thing, for, for a fraction, um, we change its form. We divide above and below by the highest power of s. The highest power of s is s to the 4. So we divide above by s to the 4 and we divide underneath by s to the 4. Now we can see that as s approaches infinity, this fraction will approach zero, and indeed all of these fractions here will approach zero. So uh, the entire thing is going to approach four over one, which is four. So that's the initial value of the output. Now we want um, the steady state, our final value of the output, little y of t. So this is got by calculating this limit, the limit as t approaches infinity of little y of t. So we apply the final value theorem. We don't have to get the inverse Laplace transform of this quantity. We calculate the limit as s approaches zero of s times y of s. So we have to multiply this by s, like before. Okay, so what will happen? Well, this term will approach zero, this term will approach zero, and all of these terms will approach zero. So the entire thing little s times big Y of s is going to approach um, 0 over 0 plus 24, which is 0. So the final or steady state value of the output, little y of t, is 0.